the San Antonio Spurs are an outstanding basketball team. They might wind up with the best record in the NBA, and they could reach the NBA Finals. But unless literally everything breaks the Spurs' way, they're not actually title contenders. Too many people are confusing regular season excellence for potential postseason dominance. Year in and year out, though, we learn the playoffs are a whole different experience than the 82-game grind. Even the most minor flaws can shatter a gem of a season when March and April give way to May and June, and as fantastic as Kai Leonard and company are, this team absolutely has flaws. Let's start with La Marcus Aldridge. The big man has improved immeasurably since his time in Portland. He's a far better defender and a more willing passer than he was as a blazer, to be sure. He no longer hijacks entire offensive possessions by catching the ball on the wing, planting himself with his back to the basket, and slowly deciding to loft a shot over his defender. Still, there's no way around the fact the Spurs are a much better team without Aldridge. San Antonio has a net rating of 6.0 points per 100 possessions when Aldridge is on the court and 12.2 points when he sits. The former is a fine number that would rank the Spurs fourth in the NBA this season, but it's not a championship caliber number. The latter would rank among the greatest scoring margins in basketball history. Why the disparity? Aldridge hesitates on the catch far too often, and when he is decisive, it's because he's overpassing. He also overhelps on defense, in a noble effort to clean up his teammates' mistakes, but the Spurs system is predicated on people being in the right place at the right time. Don't get me wrong, I'm very happy Aldridge is healthy and able to play. Anyone who's treating his return as the key to a Spurs title run, though, isn't paying attention. Speaking of paying attention, did we all forget what happened in the 2016 playoffs? The Spurs eviscerated the Thunder in Game 1 of the Western Conference semifinals, only to watch Billy Donovan change tactics and leverage Oklahoma City's abundant athleticism to throttle San Antonio the rest of the series. The indelible image of that series, other than a couple questionable calls, to be sure, is how slow the Spurs looked relative to the opposition. And it wasn't just Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant. Enns Cantor, Stephen Adams, basically everyone but Cameron and Payne ran right past the lead-footed pretenders clad in black and silver last postseason. Tim Duncan and Boris Dia are gone, but the Spurs still rely on, veteran presences, to put it kindly. Unless Manu Ginobili and Tony Parker are saving another gear for the postseason. San Antonio will struggle mightily to keep up with the likes of James Harden and the Rockets, Blake Griffin's Clippers, or, of course, a full-strength Golden State Warriors team. And should the Spurs somehow find a way through the Western Conference, well, there's that LeBron James guy waiting in the wings. You don't think he's salivating at the idea of playing a team that gives significant minutes a 36-year-old Pau Gasol? a 33-year-old David Lee, a 34-year-old Parker, and a 39-year-old Manu? Experience is great and all, but let's be real here. Western Conference contenders? Sure. Favorites in the West? Maybe. Capable of winning a ring? Not when your experience borders on NBA senility. Sorry. Before San Antonio can even think about the NBA Finals, however, there's one matchup in the West that would spell certain doom for the Spurs. Be careful what you wish for, indeed. The number one seed might look like a nice prize for a solid 2016-17 season, but it could mean a date with the formidable Utah Jazz, my sleeper pick in the West. Rudy Gobert's squad is perfectly comfortable playing the Spurs style of basketball, and the Jazz big men are just better than their San Antonio counterparts. Gordon Hayward, Joe Johnson and, yes, Boris Dia can all fill it up and create shots for others. Plus, Utah would have the advantage on the point guard front, there's a reason the Jazz's George Hill was one of Greg Popovich's favorite players, after all. Add it up, and I'd favor Utah over San Antonio in a potential second-round matchup. The only caveat, 
NBA playoff series often come down to the single best player on either team. Against anyone but the Cavs or Warriors, that's Kawhi Leonard. And the Spurs' one potential saving grace is the claw. Leonard's ascent to the pinnacle of the NBA has been nothing short of extraordinary. He is unquestionably the Associates' best two-way player, whatever that ubiquitous, nonsensical phrase means. His ability to score with ridiculous efficiency from everywhere on the floor and in every situation makes Leonard one of the true greats in today's game. In the postseason, Hauve, 